Hi guys, Carl here from Stoffball. Today I'm here with Tony Beals. Uh, we're going to be talking through cross country and all things running related. Uh, so first off, I've known Tony for about a year now um, since I joined Wyndham Athletic Club. Um, I've been interviewing Tony for several reasons, but one of which is that first off, as soon as I joined, he was one of the first people to kind of learn my name and bother to make an effort to kind of talk to me as well, which is obviously when you're joining a club is, is one of the most daunting parts. So Tony, how long have you been running for? I've uh, been running now for coming up six years. Okay, and how did you get into it first off? Um, how quite a lot of people my age tend to get into it playing a lot of football um, picked up quite a lot of injuries couldn't compete with the younger lads playing and uh, decided that uh, needed to keep fit so you know just started running really um, as a means of sort of um, you know maintaining weight levels basically okay. rather than uh, excess Fair so it's kind of more of a health and fitness kind of thing What's the start of running, yeah so. very much so well, probably still is to some degree but uh, um, what motivated me to sort of start running was that my dad um, had Parkinson's and um, I wanted to, uh, I realised that when I was running I could actually make a difference and you know, raise some money for charity so I entered the Great North Run um, and uh, raised £1,500 something like that for Parkinson's, um, joined the running club because I felt I needed a little bit of extra coaching and expertise. Um, and then I was encouraged at the club to maybe enter a few competitions and the um, rest is history basically. Excellent. And obviously you do quite a bit of cross country running in particular. Um, what is it about cross so. country running that you prefer to or do more in Jordan than both Uh Well when I was at school um, I used to run for my school and um, I was captain of the cross country team there. Yeah. And um, I think that, uh, I, I think with cross country it's a, it's a totally different um, um, you know, it's a totally different mindset than, than, than road running. Um, I think the, 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 what I like about cross country is the fact that you know when you're running it, so, certainly if you're say doing two circuits, you know a route to go and then you think in your head, right, I'm not going to go that route, I'm going to go this route, maybe run on this side of the track or whatever. Yeah. And so from, from that, I think, I, I think there's more, in the, you know, you're using more of your mind, I think, uh, uh, in cross country. You know, I love, you know, the rain, the mud, the dirt, yeah. you know, it's great. And also, um, it's also really good strength building for, uh, you know, for a lot of the um, uh, athletes, um, you know, the, uh, like our, our national athletes, international athletes, um, you know, do a lot of cross country training during the winter months as a form of strength building. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that uh, last year, um, I had a, um, you know, I came back from injury and um, most of what I did was on cr in cross country, so it was um, it was easier on my legs. Although yeah. it's strength building, it, it was easier on my legs, and um, it really helped my road running. And I knocked my PBs at five k, ten k, five miles um, by some considerable uh, margin. And I think you know that's all down to you know running cross country over the winter months. Okay, fantastic. So, oh, the great thing about cross country is that it does force the different technique, it forces that higher knee lift. Yeah. Forces and um, ankle strength to be increased, and also you say strength training from the point of view of your running can be much much tougher surfaces. Yeah. But equally, at the same time, there's less impact, so yes. there's, there's the benefit from that. Um, with the injuries you sustained, then what was the the kind of the big thing you thought? Yeah, I need to change this then. Um, I think most of my injuries were probably picked up by um, probably not enough stretching, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, uh, following sort of training sessions and, and road racing. Um, I had shin splints. I've had plantar fasciitis. Um, they're sort of like, and, and and also a few years back, I had IT uh, bad problems as well. So um, I think obviously, you know, a lot of it may have been down to sort of like, you know, running in shoes that perhaps weren't as bet as proper fitting as they should have been, okay. um, which I've obviously now addressed. Um, but Sport um, I guess. Uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah, old Pete Johnson down at Sportling yeah. look, looked after me over the years. So, yeah, uh, great bike down um, well. Yeah, um, but yeah, I think that uh, you know the injury side of it is um, you know it, it was frustrating. But look, thankfully, last year, two thousand eighteen, um, managed to sort of pray, uh, stay pretty much injury free, um, which has enabled me to sort of like you know compete in more races and and, and do a lot more while sort of like managing my body at the same time so um obviously that then leads into those pbs you mentioned the five oh, very much so. five yeah. miles because you get the consistency in the training yeah yeah definitely so and i think that you know i found that ideally for me i know everyone's different everyone's bodies are different but for me ideally i probably need to run sort of a minimum of 
three times a week, ideally four, you know, but, you know, I suppose to hit peak level, probably about five times a week, yeah. really. Um, I don't know, 25, 30 miles, something like that. Yeah, I mean, it does always vary, as you say. Yeah. Everyone's very, very different. I know some people can run sort of 20, 30 miles, and that's their kind of limit. Yeah. Other people running 60, 70 miles, and really hard miles, and if they don't do that, they don't progress. Yeah, I've seen so that strong. Some of our, obviously, the top athletes within our uh, club, you know, I mean, they're running like, yeah, two and a half thousand miles a year. And yeah. I think, you know, I've struggled to sort of get to seven hundred. <laughs> so, uh, the difficult as well is time, isn't it? As well, you yeah, fit that in. yeah, it is. Yeah, and I think that, and I think that's very much a mindset. Um, and you know, when you've had a sort of like a, you know, a hard day at the office, then and, and it's chucking it down with rain, and it's dark. And the last thing you want to go do is go home when it's yeah. all nice and warm, and then get changed, go out to your running gear, and then go out running. So you know, you really got to have a sort of like a, um, you know, a focused mindset to be able to sort of do that. And you know, I admire, you know. Anyone that, could, that that can do that, get up at five o'clock in the morning. You know, I get up, got up at five o'clock a few a few mornings in the summer. It's really hot during the day, and I couldn't run in the day because uh, yeah, the heat affects me big time. So I was getting up at five o'clock, and uh, yeah, it was a great great start to the day because you know you feel you know you've done sort of like six seven miles. You feel you know invigorated, and you know you deal with the challenges of the day that lie ahead. But um, good time to clean mind as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But certainly, I do admire the ones that sort of go out in all weathers at all times. Um, you know, what I would consider to be anti-social times with head torches on, goodness knows what else. And yeah. Yeah, fair play to them, maybe that's something I need to do. But again, you know, if you do start doing too much, then, you know, the body and, you know, that does, it does take its toll and yeah. I'm not getting any younger. I do think as well, though, it does obviously fit in with lifestyles. You know, some people love that early morning getting up. Yeah, definitely. Um, I know I personally really struggle with it. I mean, I was out a couple of mornings ago doing yeah. a 6.30 a.m. hill session. Yeah. The last thing I wanted to do was be out there doing that. You know, much more of an evening kind of runner, which yeah. is why you know, running with the club, which suits me really nicely. That's um, right. So with that, obviously, you said about the, um, the things you enjoy with you're not saying not as enjoyable about running. What do you find most enjoyable? What's your favourite thing about running? Um, I think it's the feeling that you've got once you've done it, and you feel absolutely broken, but you know that, uh, <laughs> but you know that you've done really well. And uh, I think the more you put into a training session, the more you get out of it afterwards, and uh, it gives you a sort of like a really positive feeling of you know well-being. And um, yeah, that, that's what I get out of it, knowing that I've you know worked hard and uh, um, just a sense of fulfilment really. Um, but uh, I think. You know, and, and coming back to the cross country sites, you know, since I've sort of, uh, um, you know, been cross country captain at Wyndham and seeing so many different people of all different running abilities getting involved, embracing it, um, you know, it, it, it's amazing. It's absolutely fabulous. And, you know, um, yesterday we were sort of uh, recognised as being the best representative club of the Norfolk County Cross Country Championships this Sunday at Thetford. Uh, and that's immense, you know, and to think that you know, we've got more runners running, competing than, you know, some of the bigger clubs in the area, I think says a lot about our running club and, you know, the, the, um, you know, the way that a lot of our members have embraced cross country, which is awesome. Yeah, I, mean, I think, you know, all due credit to yourself, you know, for, for encouraging so many people to get involved, and obviously what you do on a Monday evening when you, you talk about cross country so enthusiastically. Again, it's another part of the reason why I wanted to interview because you are so passionate about it. Yeah. And um, and most people are very kind of focused on you know, times for road running and that's it. And obviously, getting a PB on, on cross country or trail running is, is not impossible in comparison. Yeah. So people, I think, don't focus maybe as much on that. So seeing someone who's not as fussed by those things necessarily, but still has that absolute passion for running, but just in a different way, is brilliant to see. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, obviously, you know, a lot of cross country races aren't sort of chip timed and they're not. Um, or if they are timed, it's sort of, you know, it, it's uh, gun to clock, so to speak. Yeah. So, um, which, you know, it, is good. And the way I measure it is that if I've done an event one year, I've got it on my watch. So, yeah, um, and I'll use that watch as a sort of like a, a, a barometer then to see how I've done the following year. So, um, but, um, you know, PBs in cross country, I think it's just, just a bit of a non starter, really. But but they but it's a great base in order to sort of get those PBs for your road work in the five Ks, ten Ks, whatever. Yeah, uh, whatever it, you're doing. It constitutes that entire round of training program. You've got some stretching, some strengthening, yeah. different types of running, different distances, you know, different paces, well, obviously. Um, 
But you say within the cross country, you've got your own timing, so you can do your own timing. Yeah. That comparison as long as you're tracking it. Yeah, definitely. So good. And that's what I do do. And I think the other thing is also, I think, as far as the club is concerned, with the numbers that we've now got involved across country, um, and certainly the ones that have been doing it on a regular basis this season, be interesting to see, you know, what their road times are. You know, when they, st you know, when they start going into those sort of spring road races to see how much the cross country has actually improved their times. And I think they'll be quite surprised. Yeah, I think particularly sort of the spring half marathons. I think in particular in marathons it will really pay Absolutely. off yeah, because there is a, that, that length, that leg strength endurance, um, mm. which otherwise don't necessarily build that much without right. specific leg strength training. Absolutely. Um, so with that, you said that you track your your runs over periods of time. Yeah. Have you got any long term goals you're looking to work at for yourself? Um, yeah, I mean, last year uh, my aim was really to sort of obviously I had you know the, the, the planter and the shin splits for you know the, the previous two years. So last year my aim was to stay injury free and to compete as much as I possibly could, you know, and, and, and to do as many races as I possibly could, both in on road races and also in cross country. And, um, and I think I fulfilled that last year because I know that I did I ran more than I had ever done before. Um, this year going forward, um, it's got the Parliament Hills Cross Country um, at the end of this month, which uh, thoroughly looking forward to. It's one to tick off the bucket list. It's the big, biggest cross country challenge that I've ever had, and uh, certainly uh, those that are coming down. Uh, I, I think a couple of them may have run it before, but certainly uh, it's a challenge to all. So I look forward to that. Um, Cambridge Half Marathon um, in, in March. Um, start to train for that. I've done a couple of 10 miles in half marathon back in the uh, 2018. So. You know, I've got it in my legs, so I'm probably going to do a little bit of uh, Marriott's way um, as a bit of strength building for that one. Um, and I think that you know that's the one that I'm aiming for for my PB on that one, if I if I can do it. Um, probably not as run as much in the summer um, because um, of the heat. I really do struggle running in the heat, and it does affect my times big time. And I find that you know once I've done a run in the summer, and you know it's been really hot, and I haven't enjoyed it. And, you know, I get disappointed because the time is rubbish, and, um, and I, that, I, I, you know, I, that, that, I did experience that quite a bit last year. Obviously, it was quite a hot summer, wasn't it? It was empty. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think you know, for this year, I'm not going to compete as much in the summer. Just cherry pick a few events, but just work on sort of like early morning training and probably getting out on the bike as well. Yeah. So again, mixing up training obviously yeah. keeps it very, keeps it interesting as well. Yeah. Definitely. Also, making sure we don't overdevelop muscles in one way, shape, or form. Yeah. Which obviously leads a lot of the time to things like IT band problems, plantar fasciitis, and um, chin splits. Chin splits. That's all. Yeah. Um, you know, so you know things like you said, obviously you're getting the right type of shoes, so having a couple of different types of shoes, so you can yeah. run in a slightly different way. And obviously, cross country shoes are very different as well. Oh, definitely. Yeah. The uh, um, the shoes. I mean, obviously, you can wear trail shoes or spikes. Um, and some cases, like with the Thetford Trail Runs, it's probably better off actually running in trainers than that because some of those paths are quite hard and you don't have the same sort of cushioning in a trail shoe or a spike. So uh, Yeah, I, um, I ran the first one a couple of weeks back and it was, a, it was very odd because there's a couple of muddy patches but nothing too much. No. Um, and I ran in normal training, which was absolutely fine. Yeah. My partner ran in uh, her, her cross country shot trail shoes. Yeah. And the, the kind of bobbly areas where there's kind of flints and slates yes. sticking out of the floor. Incredibly tough to run on. Yeah. Even with me and my cushion shoe, it's yeah. difficult. Um, so it can yeah, obviously vary depending on the course. Yeah. Um, so, what would be your top tip then for trying to find the right shoe for the right event? Um, well, obviously, you know the course, know the terrain, know what you're going to be running on. Um, I would say that uh, I find that the spike is fairly sort of, you know, depending on what sort of size spike you're putting into your shoe, but. Uh, um, spikes are generally okay. With obviously, if you had a sort of like a, a lot of, um, you know, it's a fairly, be a fairly muddy course, uh, fields and uh, uh, mud tracks and things like that. I tend to use the Innovate shoe um, because I find that, uh, uh, that the way that that's designed is very light. It releases water very quickly. Um, yeah, very on cross country. Down absolutely. <laughs> um, and, it, and and the you know the the, the, the sole of the of the grip is immense, and uh, I think it's got a better. Uh, a better, better sole than mo a lot of the trail shoes, which gives you better grip. So, um, uh, and that's the shoe that I use. Um, and I've used, so, you know, I, I, I stopped using spikes um, about a year ago, and I've been used my Innovate trail shoes, and uh, just as light as a spike. But in my opinion, I think they just give you a little bit of extra cushioning, um, and the support of the grip, I think, is is as good as a spike. Um, when it comes to Parliament Hills, which is a completely muddy course. 
I'll probably go to back on Sparks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's one of those things where, where everyone has got their own preference ultimately. Yeah. It's one of my favourite things about running, that although there are certain standards across the board, yeah. everyone is going to experience things slightly differently. There is no black and white or anything, no. and there isn't that kind of expectation of this is definitely the best way to do things. Yeah, that's it. I think that, I mean, most of the, I've run most of the cross country courses around here now, and uh, uh, pretty much most, I mean, certainly the ones like over at Shoulder Warren, Thetford, where, you know, Thetford Forest, that's sort of fairly sandy, hard track. Yeah, you can get away easy with a, with a, with a trainer on that one, really, or a trail shoe. You can wear a spike, but... Uh, um, hard going on the legs and knees, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah, a little bit. So, uh, but, yeah, but mostly, but mostly I find the trail shoe is fine. Excellent. And what we'd say again is probably the last thing now is what is your one tip uh, for maintaining interest in running and enjoying it most? Uh, again, everyone has different sort of motivation and goals, don't they? And, and, they're, and, and they're sort of like the way... People do things for different reasons, don't they? Me personally, um, it's um, I think you know I, I look at it from a weight perspective because I know that if I don't run, then you know I can be prone to balloon. Um, so I look at it from that perspective. Um, I very much run with a watch all the time, and I'm you know, and I'm always looking to beat my previous um, uh, previous bests. Um, so yeah, I mean it's yeah I suppose my sort of like my, my you know the reason why I run it is is, is to control weight um, and to improve have that competitive side of me um, and you know try and be the best that I do. I know I'll never be a sort of like an elite athlete or anything else like that. However, I enjoy it. Uh, I enjoy getting others involved as well. Um, and you know it, it's it's good. And I think that you know the club at the moment is in a very very good position. Um, I think we've got some really good, uh, you know, good members right from the yeah. from the elite right down to, uh, uh, you know, the lower end. And I think, you know, and, and, I, and I think the I think the greatest thing is the support that everyone has for everyone else. I yeah. think that's yeah, that's one of the greatest things because, you know, I've spoken to a uh, few people uh, who recently joined the club, and they've also been to other clubs, um, and they said that, that yeah, the other feedback that I've got is that our club. Um, it's very friendly, very supportive. Uh, coaching is very good, um, and you know, endorse all that. And I think that's, yeah, I think that's that's what it's all about. So I think, yeah, you've also got that social element as well. So um, yeah, it's good. So yeah, I mean, self competition is, is obviously a great thing, um, and it takes away any extra emphasis from other people, and it yeah. takes you know, you control the numbers in your hands. Yeah. Um, but no, great stuff. Thank you so much for your time, Jay. Really That's appreciate right. that. Um, we'll maybe come back another time and talk some more cross country another time. Uh, maybe go for a run in the cross country and, yeah, and do some work outside and sort of yeah. see how, you, how we do. Um, but no, thank you so much for your time. You're really welcome. Nice one, Carl. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Right, guys, that's it. Into uh, Tony interview done. Um, if you have any questions for Tony or if you've got any questions about cross country, let me know and I can pass on the message and I shall get back to you as soon as I can. Cheers, guys. See you soon. Thank you.